Hey there, this is Brent, and what I want to do is show you an example of multi-touch using gestures. Specifically, we're going to cover the zoom and rotate gesture events. Now, in other tutorials, I've talked about touch points, and when we talk about gestures, we're talking about specific uh, combinations of touches, if you will, that trigger specific events. And so let's get started. We're going to create a project. Now remember, this will work across any multi-touch device that supports gesture events. So let's go ahead and create an Android app using the Android template. And here, what we'll do is set up the stage. I want to add an image. Now I know you can't see this off stage, but I'm going to bring this image in and add this to the stage. Let's show everything here. Okay, I'm just uh, setting up this image. I want to turn this into a movie clip. So right click and it's, you can't see it, but it says convert to symbol. Now make sure the registration point is in the center. The reason for that is because we will manipulate the image based on the zoom and rotate and we want to rotate around the center registration point. It's also a movie clip, so keep that there. And we'll just call this Elevator. All right, now at this point, uh, let's go ahead and save our document. And we're going to call this Gesture Example. Go ahead and click Save. And the other thing we want to do, select your movie clip that's on the stage, and let's give this an instance name. We'll call it Gesture. Press Return. Now. Click away from there. We want to select off of the stage. We want to choose and edit the class definition. We want to create a document class. Go ahead and select Flash Professional. Oh, hey, let's give it this name. I like to call my document classes by the same name as the FLA, so I want to call this Gesture Example. Go ahead and click OK. And it uh, creates a script. Now go ahead and save this. And we're going to save. And it's all set up for us. Awesome. Okay, let's jump into some code. Uh, I always like to use an init function in my constructor functions. And let's go ahead and say private function init. It's not going to return anything. All right, here we are. Now, in the past, in the other example, in the past, you know, a week ago, two days ago, uh, we created this multi-touch example in Flash Builder and the same principles apply whether you're using Flash CS5 or Flash Builder 4.5 or any other development ActionScript 3 development environment where you create and you want to test for specific uh, functionality, right? So remember the multi-touch, we're going to say uh, if multi-touch and we're gonna I just press control space so we can get some code hinting and we want that one and the event is called uh, or sorry the property is supports gesture events right and that'll return a boolean a, a true or false and so we're saying if it supports gesture events then I'll call another function uh, set up gestures. Okay. Now, private function set up gestures. It returns nothing. All right, let's do that. Now, if this doesn't support gestures, then we need to do something else. And so, uh, of course, you could alert the user. Uh, but for our instance, uh, we're just going to say uh, it no worky. Again, excellent grammar if I do say so myself. All right, when we set up the gestures, we want to listen for two types of gestures. Uh, we're going to talk about gesture zoom and gesture rotate. And specifically, we want to listen for those events when they occur on the elevator uh, movie clip. Remember, we named this gesture. <laughs> I'm smart, I tell you what. Somebody saw that and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed. We call this elevator. 
Wow, I must have been daydreaming or something. Daydreaming about the next iPhone. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so we correctly named this elevator. I'm going to save. Click over here. Go ahead and save here. And uh, again, what we're doing is we're going to reference. We want to listen for events that occur uh, on elevator dot add event listener so that uh, we can get we want to listen for specific and it's called gesture and they're transform gesture events so first I need to get those in there so if I say transform gesture event dot and then the one we want is uh, rotate and then we want to call a function we'll call it handle gestures and we'll do one more elevator dot add event listener and again we want to listen for the transform gesture event and specifically the zoom event okay go ahead and we're going to call handle gestures again now one more thing has to happen can you guess can you guess whenever you're working with multi-touch you need to establish the type of multi-touch input right so we will say multi-touch again we're referencing multi-touch class and we're gonna say input mode equals and then it's going to be of a type multi-touch input mode this guy right here go ahead and check that notice how uh, it's been bringing in the imports for us I really like that the other advantage is when you're using a document class uh, an AS file, you're going to get those code hints a lot easier than you would within uh, the timeline, the code hints, because a lot of the things are built in. You don't get those code hints like you would if you're out here. All right. Dot gesture. Okay. Now, what is the difference? Why, why would I have a difference between gesture and touch point and none like why would I do that well you can set what uh, you want to listen for based on the gesture the input mode so if you say gestures then you're going to get gesture events if you say touch point then you're gonna to get touch point events someone will say well Brent can I do both well no you can't do both and the reason for it uh, one reason that I can think of <clears throat> excuse me that I can think of is you can think of a gesture as a combination of touch points. Remember, a touch point has touch point IDs so that you can identify multiple touches and track them at the same time. So you can have touches that are moving, you know, multiple fingers on the screen moving at the same time, and you can track them independently. With a gesture, you're using a combination. So, for example, on rotate, you have two touch points that are turning uh, relative to each other and it causes a rotate uh, rotate gesture well it's basically a combination of touch points so think of gestures as as kind of the upper it's, it's a step above touch points and so touch points are more of the raw data well what that means then if you have things that you want to do you want to listen for specific types of gestures and let's say they don't cover everything you want well, you can create your own using touch points. So we're relying on the built-in gestures that are part of uh, the mobile API. All right, this will all make sense when we build this and run it. So we need to create this function, handle gestures. So we're gonna say private function, handle gestures. And the event is a transform transform gesture event that guy right there right void there we go so what types are we listening for well we said we want to hear rotate and zoom so when we get the event it's going to call this function and depending on the type of event we want to handle it differently so for this one, let's say if event.type equals 
And we'll just use the string uh, variation of it. So gesture rotate is the string value. If it's that, we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. Now, I only have two uh, gesture events that are coming to this, so it's fairly simple. Obviously, you could uh, work this out if you had multiple, because there are multiple types of gestures. Um, there's rotate, zoom, pan, and swipe. But we're going to cover these two. OK, so if we know it's a rotate, then what happens is we get a value from the event called a rotation. It's a rotation uh, delta, if you will. So what we're going to do then is remember we have our elevator object. And now there's many ways to do this. Um, you could type the event dot current target to to the elevator so that you know that you're listening for that object. Since we only have one object on the stage, I'm just going to reference that object because I know that's the one we're listening for. But if I had multiple objects on the stage, I would want to listen for the event dot current target to make sure I was modifying the correct movie clip. But for our purposes, hey, we're just going to do this. So there's a rotation property. And what's going to happen is we're going to say plus equals the event dot rotation number. Okay, And this will modify the rotation for us. And again, this will all make sense when we <clears throat> run this, which will be in the next tutorial. So if it's not a rotate uh, gesture, then it's a zoom gesture. And the zoom gesture gives us um, what we call scale uh, values. So I want to affect the scale position. And so I want to affect the scale x. And what happens is the value that the event returns is a small value. And so we're going to say event dot scale x. So those are the values that we get in a zoom event. So the event will have properties called scale x and scale y. So, and I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying it because it's such a small amount. And this will, again, this will all make sense. Trust me, you'll love it. Okay, go ahead and save this. So let's quickly review what we've done. We've created uh, a document class on our stage. We have an image called Elevator. And in the document class, we are going to first see if this supports gesture events. Because if it doesn't, then we have to do something differently. You want to handle this appropriately so that when the user buys your app or uses it, and if they don't happen to have gesture support, you know, they don't want to see that it's broken. They want to get some sort of prompt or some other information that says, hey, you know, it'd be great to work with this app if you had a real device. Uh, for now, we're just going to say, hey, it, it no worky. If it is working, we say set up gestures, which then we set the input mode to gestures so that we can then get the gesture events. This You can change the input mode programmatically. You can change it at any time. So if within certain elements of your app, you want to have gesture events, and then you want to switch over to touch events, you can do that. And you just change the input mode. Pretty simple. The key is knowing that when you have an event listener, only the certain types of gestures will be triggered if the input mode is set properly. So we're listening for gesture rotate and gesture zoom. What will happen is we get the rotate event and there is a value, a rotation value, that we will then affect the elevator movie clip. We're going to change its rotation. And for zoom, we get this scale x and scale y. And so we're going to affect the scale x and scale y of the elevator. All right, stay tuned till the next tutorial. And we'll show this in action on a real device.